So that's a long, you know, instrumental passage. Um, I took time to replicate all the instruments in the original recording. Okay, the double slab xylophone. Okay, the wooden slid drum of two different pitches. Okay, the pot drum, we will do the pulse marker, the clappers, and the rattles. Okay, I took time to you know use all of them. The uh, clapperless bells, <coughs> you're gonna play there, the echaka, the ekbili, which is a rattle, you know, pot, uh, you know, pot, um, rattles made of uh, pods. Okay, I use all of them, but in addition. I now highlighted the Oja, which you didn't hear much in the other instrument, and gave the, uh, uh, the uh, Oja player much time to express himself by that way, uh, elongating the uh, duration of the song. And also added another melodic instrument, which you hear coming once in a while, and that is the xylophone tuned to pentatonic you know, mode. You hear breaking the monotony in the instrumental groove that is accompanying the whole song. Because it is purely instrumental music which you need to listen to. Well, may dance to also. You can hear that the tempo is fast. So it, it appeals to the dancing feet. And is a purely you know, male ensemble. Okay, that, that's where you can hear all, almost all the percussion instruments in, in our car area, you know, uh, forming in the ensemble. Yes, in festivals, you know, calendar activities, festivals that happen once in a year, you would see this. In age grade performances, okay, especially an age grade that is made of uh, elderly people, okay, you hear their dexterity in instrumental manipulation. That's what they want to show. And that way too, they are uh, you know, uh, role modeling. They are mentoring the younger ones who will eventually replace them. And you find that in that ensemble, this is people of a particular age that play all the instruments, while the younger ones stay by to watch. The, the young man who played the Oja had to listen to Thomas's over and over again, and now listen to my own over and over again, then inspired by what was done by the person who played in Thomas's, now took, if you like, an updated, <laughs> you know, version of the melody that was suggested by, the, you know, the, the person who played in Thomas's recording. There are different contexts for, you know, uh, the flautist's performance and uh, what he does in the performance. The, when it is funeral, for instance, the flautist is said to um, accompany the deceased to the ancestral land, okay? So he plays to escort the spirit of the deceased to ancestral land, where he's initiated into you know, the Council of Ancestors, okay? So he has that role too. In a wrestling match, the Oja inspires the wrestler to you know, give his best. Okay, if he gets fatigued and he wants to get off at some point, the Oja encourages. Okay, and that way he gets, um, uh, if you like, you say um, a backup of energy. <laughs> okay, to carry on and uh, achieve what he has set out to. So the Oja there is not just a melodic instrument; it has other roles, non-musical roles that it plays. That was why I had to go to look for somebody who is an expert mm. to play the Oja. Mm. He spent time listening to what Thomas recorded and what I recorded before he now said he was ready, mm. okay? Mm. Before he listened enough to be possessed by the spirit of the performance, mm. before he went into the studio to play. Mm.